Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson here. Welcome back from spring break. I hope we're all feeling refreshed and ready to get back to it and finish out the rest of the trimester. Um, today we are looking at 6.4, which is on polynomial functions. The example at the top of your notes page says a cross-section of the honeycomb pattern has uh, with one hexagon surrounded by six more hexagons. Uh, surrounding these is a third ring of 12 hexagons and so on. The total number of hexagons in a honeycomb can be, can be modeled by the function um, f of r is equal to 3r squared minus 3r plus 1, where r is the number of rings and f of r is the number of hexagons. Find the number of hexagons where r equals 4 and r equals 12. So we know the function of the pattern. We're looking at this pattern here. We start with a hexagon, and then we go around the outside, then we go around the outside of that, and so on. And each one of these is a ring. So what we want to know is how many hexagons will we have if we're looking at four rings. So I need to take the four and plug it in for r. That means I have the function of four rings. That's just a notation there that's called function notation. Um, so we're not doing anything mathematically with that. It's just the notation of the function with four rings equaling three times four squared minus three times four plus one. And then I simplify each part of it. So I have f of four equals three times four squared. Four squared is 16 and 16 times four is 40 or times three is 48. So that's 48 minus three times four, which is 12 plus one. And then I can go ahead and put all those together. 48 minus 12 plus 1 is 37. So I know that there's going to be a total of 37 hexagons when I get down to um, the fourth ring. It also asks us to look at the 12th ring. So now I'm going to take 12 and plug it in for R. So I have f of 12 equaling 3 times 12 squared minus 3 times 12 plus 1. So we want to follow our order of operations. And 12 squared is going to give me 144, so I have 3 times 144 minus 3 times 12, which is 36, plus 1. So 3 times 144 gives me 432 minus 36 plus 1, and that I end up with 397. So that way I know that the 12th ring around the outside of this honeycomb pattern is going to have 397 hexagons. So that's my polynomial function. I'm just taking each one and plugging it in. Now let's take a look at our terms for today. The first one is a polynomial in one variable. A couple things that we want to keep in mind when we have this is that there's only one variable in the polynomial, which is why it's called a polynomial in one variable. And we also are not supposed to have any variables in the denominator of a fraction. So we have to check that out as well. Um, when we look at the degree of a polynomial, we're looking for the largest degree of any monomial in the polynomial. So we've talked about this degree of polynomial in the past. We looked at each monomial separate and then found the largest coefficient or the largest um, exponent in that case. And the last one, leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the largest degree. So the word leading leads you to believe that it's the coefficient in front, because leading means beginning or in front. Um, that is true if our polynomial is written in standard form. So as long as our polynomial is in standard form, then it is the front coefficient. But if it's not in standard form, we need to look for that term that has the greatest degree, and it's our coefficient there. So let's just practice finding these things. Um, in number one, it says state the degree and the leading coefficient of each polynomial. If it's not a polynomial, explain why. Okay, so in number one, I want to look at my polynomial that I have there. I have 7x to the fourth, 5x squared plus x minus 9. I have only one variable and I have no variables in the denominator. So it is a polynomial in one variable here. When I take a look at the degrees of each term, the degree of the term here is 4. The degree of the term there is 2, there it's 1, there it's 0. So my degree of the whole polynomial is going to be 4. And then if I also look for the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is the coefficient in front of the term with the largest degree, which in this case we're written in standard form, which is good. So my leading coefficient, or I'm just going to abbreviate LC, is actually 7. Okay. 
Let's take a look at number two. We're talking about polynomials in one variable today. So if we look at number two, I have 8x squared plus 3xy minus 2y squared. Now, if we want to look at polynomials in one variable, I, in my middle term, have an x and a y. Here I have a y. There I have an x. I have two variables. So this is actually not a polynomial in one variable. And that's because there are two variables. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video at this time. See if you can answer number three. So first decide, is it a polynomial in one variable or not? And if it's not, tell me why. If it is, tell me the leading coefficient and the degree. Let's move on to number four. In number four, I'm trying to find the function of b squared if my function of x is 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the b squared and I'm plugging that in any place that I see x. So if I write that out, it looks like this. f of b squared um, equals 2 times b squared squared plus 3 times b squared minus 1. So now I want to go through and simplify that as much as I can. If I take a look at b squared to the second power, that's 2 times b to the fourth power. And then in the middle, 3 times b squared is just 3b squared. And at the end, subtract 1. I want to check for any like terms. Here I have a b to the fourth. In the middle, I have b squared. And then the last one, I have a negative 1. There are no like terms here. So that's as simplified as it can get. My function at b squared is 2b to the fourth plus 3b squared minus 1. So now let's take a look at number 5. I'm going to help you get started on number 5, and then I want you to finish it off um, for your quiz today. So we're going to start by taking this c plus 2 and plugging it in for x. And when we're done with that, it's, we're going to multiply the whole thing by 2. We have 2 times the function of g at c plus 2, c plus 2 being our value there. So I'm going to take the c plus 2 and plug it in for x. I have a 2 outside that's going to be multiplied at the end. So inside, I have c plus 2 quantity squared minus 4, and I need to simplify that. Now, remember with that c plus 2 quantity squared, we actually need to FOIL that. So that's 2 times c plus 2 times c plus 2 minus 4. So here's where I'm going to leave you, and I want you to see if you can finish the rest of this on your own. Don't forget to hop back to Schoology and take your Schoology quiz, and we will come back tomorrow and finish the rest of your notes. Thanks for watching, and have a good night.